Hello, uh, welcome to the learning session on Indian economy. In this session, we will talk about India's industrial development. You will find the details in chapter 9 of the book, uh, Datan Sundaram's Indian Economy. So, uh, industry is the, the core of any economy. So, the, for the development of an economy, uh, it's very important to see that how actually the industrial sector actually grew over the years. So, in this chapter, uh, we'll talk about India's industrialization drive, uh, especially uh, from our independence day. So, uh, uh, the outline of the chapter is basically, we'll talk about uh, pre- and post-independence period, briefly touch upon, then the industrial development through five-year plans, uh, industrial performance pre- and the post-liberalization, and then we'll briefly discuss the series for um, industrial policy. Uh, and then uh, one important aspect is basically what we call small and medium uh, scale enterprises. So uh, MSME, what we call micro and small medium enterprises, and also how um, uh, they are different from the large scale. Then uh, industrial trade and investments, uh, a bit of uh, foreign direct investment and global value chain, and labor and labor productivity. And finally, we'll, we'll basically conclude talking about the COVID area and India's industrial development. So industrialization is an essential part of the economic development. Um, without industrialization, development becomes very difficult. With some exceptions, some countries who are endowed with natural resources like, like the Middle East, they have certain advantages. Apart from that, countries need to specialize uh, with some sectors. Um, Industrialization and inter international trade had a close uh, correlation. Through the industrialization, the comparative advantage has been realized. So in some sectors, the countries are having certain products in which they have certain advantages. And then uh, the gains from exports actually happen. You get the market access. So when you are industrialized, you will be able to produce. You will get an economies of scale from the investment, but your own market may not be sufficient. So you need to expand outside. So if you're having a market access, so if you're able to export to other countries, then actually it may happen that you know the, the economies of scale which has been realized in the country will be a gainful effort. Uh, so as a result of that, the industrialization also drive the technology development. Um, so there will be a lot of capital formations. There is a possibility of, uh, of foreign direct investment uh, as well. So uh, here uh, in this slide and the next slide, we'll talk about India's five-year plans and where actually in the India actually focused. Uh, so from the industrialization's point of view, the second five-year plan is the very, very important, which is 1956 to 61. Um, so at that time, actually the major focus was on the heavy industry. So India decided to take a uh, path of heavy industrialization. So during that time, a lot of steel plant, a lot of other critical industries are actually set up. Uh, and, and then after that, uh, what happened, we tried to develop the small scale industries. But uh, meanwhile, we had other crises which came in, which is basically major food shortages. And India has also started having focus on, um, on uh, green revolution. So slightly uh, the focus from the industry uh, 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 shifted, and India actually had a prolonged industrial sickness in 1960s, in, just after the significant imp uh, significant investment in heavy industrialization. It is important to note that uh, that when in in 1960s or uh, from late 1950s to the early 60s, when there's heavy industrialization drivers there, India actually also understood that India requires a lot of skilled labor. So, uh, uh, very interestingly, um, the, the government took also an initiative to set up a lot of big institutions like IITs and IIMs, all were actually set up in early 60s. So further, uh, uh, India went for more um, licensing policies, so to have a major control on the investment. Um, and then uh, in 91, uh, during the eight five-year plan, and the major industrial policy has been taken, or we can say a major shift on the industrial policy happened. 
and which actually paved the path for India's economic liberalization and future growth. Uh, and then we had national manufacturing policy in 2011, uh, and where actually we tried to bring a lot of private sector's involvement uh, in new areas, as well as we tried to bring um, uh, industry and services together. So here are some uh, numbers, a quick um, understanding. So to understand the industrial performance, the basic index is called IIP, Index of Industrial Production. So you can, it has a general index and divided into some subcomponents. So you can find out that general index uh, is having certain growth, uh, high growth during uh, 80s, and then actually it fell down during the COVID time, and it is started picking up again. So within which we have basic goods, capital goods, and consumer goods is divided into durable goods and non-durable goods. So you will always find out that there is a significant growth uh, in uh, in the durable goods, uh, um, and then also sometimes on non-durable goods as well. So this basically providing us an idea about how India is doing the industrialization. So, uh, so if you look at again that significant focus on the capital goods because of heavy industrializations at this time. So the numbers are quite big here. But if you look at capital goods sectors are not growing at all in this time. So uh, India's industries, the major uh, pain point is that uh, we have started importing a lot of capital goods rather than producing here. So um, most of the machines right now are uh, coming from abroad because of, uh, of uh, liberalization foreign direct investment is coming, technology is coming from the outside. So uh, as a result of the development of the capital goods got suffered. So annual index of production, it's a, it's a growth happening with a dip during the COVID time. So if you look at the, the industrial policy in the, in the, the entire uh, system, so, um, so most important thing is industry and development and regulations in 1951. 1956. So 1956 was a heavy industry. And then uh, we have basically the licensing policies in entire 80s. And then we had a new industri industrial policies. And finally, we have this investment policy. Now, uh, in 1991, uh, we actually, um, uh, actually dismantled the industrial licensing policy substantially. So so what we did, we liberalized the industrial licensing policies of 1980s with a focus on um, uh, increasing capacity, new investment from trade point of view. And there's an act called Monopoly Restricted Trade Practices, AMRTP, which has been scrapped. So as a result of that, companies can invest uh, now without taking permission from the government. Uh, and then uh, we have industrial disputes Little issues also been, we have eased out. Then let us come to the uh, small scale enterprises. So India is a country where actually uh, we define our small scale industries, uh, our size of the industry in terms of uh, investment. Uh, rest of the world actually, the, in, uh, the definition is by the number of people engaged in that particular factory. But here in India is in terms of the investment. So manufacturing services, the earlier definition wise, the micro was uh, investment up to 25 lakhs and 10 lakhs for manufacturing services. And for small is 25 lakhs to 5 crores, 10 lakhs to 2 crores, and 5 crores to 10 crores for medium, and 2 crores to 5 crores for services. Uh, so in 2020, we have a revised classification of MSME. So we have increased uh, from from 35 lakhs to one crore to five crores. So we are broadening the space so that the smaller scale sectors can actually receive a lot of um, benefits from the government uh, because many times the government incentives are uh, defined in terms of the size of the companies. So in case of small companies uh, from 25 lakhs to five crores has reached from uh, one crore to 10 crore uh, and turnover greater than five crore and less than 50 crores. And medium-sized enterprises are actually 10 crores to uh, 20 crores, and then is greater than 50 crores and 100 crores. Okay, turnover. So, so you can see that space or definitions of medium-scale industries have gone up. And when government designs any incentives, then uh, these companies which are 
relatively bigger company as compared to the old definitions and now uh, now are uh, in the systems where actually they are eligible for getting a lot of benefits from the government. Large scale ent enterprises are also important. So uh, we started to have the culture of large scale industries from the second five year plan. And we had many sectors like iron and steels, automobile, textile, silk, fertilizer, jute, paper. These are very large in, uh, 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 industries. And these industries uh, accommodate large number of people they are generally having an ecosystem connected to small companies. For example, the automobile companies are having an extended value chain. So they are making components, accessories. So any large scale factory is having connected to a small uh, network of small companies. So uh, these, uh, these uh, basically uh, companies can do a lot of innovation. They are, are relatively strong in terms of their capability, in terms of their um, risk-taking ability. So uh, these companies are now being being uh, encouraged to create their own value chain, and sometimes they can create their own value chain across the country as well. Uh, but to improve the skill level um, of the country, especially in the industry, uh, the domestic network of uh, of uh, um, SMEs along with the large-scale sectors are very very important. So now let's come to the trade part of it. So you can see uh, one of the important thing is uh, through the global value chain. So global value chain is basically defined in two ways. One is the forward and the backward. So domestic value added in the gross exports. Uh, so that means whatever we are exporting, what is our domestic value addition? So gross exports minus domestic value additions will be basically the foreign import. So you can see it in case of uh, manufacturing and different sectors. Uh, for, for example, in totality, around 72.7% um, is domestic value addition. So that means in 2015, um, in case of India's manufacturing exports, 73% um, was the domestic value addition. So that means 27% was actually the imported component. Uh, so we are importing around 27%, so we are backward linkages is, is around that. Now come to the next part, where actually talking about domestic value added embodied in the foreign exports. So foreign country, what they are exporting, in their export, what is the contribution of our country's uh, value addition? So we can find out that in case of in 2015, it is around 10. So in general, it is 10 to 11%. So any countries the manufacturing exports, so India's contribution is around 10 to 11 percent, which is a quite impressive number. And uh, this data has been taken from Tiva database of OECD. So that basically provides us a new indicator that how our industry is getting matured, how our, how our industry is getting involved in other countries' production systems and their exports. Now let's come to the next part, which is labor productivity. So you can see the labor productivity is going down. So it has increased, it's going down. So what is important? Uh, it is basically, again, through TFP. So TFP is total factor productivity. This is not labor productivity. It's not capital productivity. So eliminating labor productivity and capital, what is the productivity left is the total factor productivity. So this total factor productivity is going down. Um, so that means, actually, that India needs to have a lot of focus on skill development. So uh, in case of India, we have uh, large-scale um, unskilled and semi-skilled workers. So reskilling of them with the modern technology are, uh, are, are a very, very important issue. So, um, so this, these, uh, are the, this should be the strategy for uh, improving the productivity, focusing on skill. So as I mentioned here, so importance of skills and technology so amalgamation of skills and so when you bring the technology you should have a required skill and this skill is not with small number of people has to be with the large number so in that case the vocational education systems of the country um, you need to uh, overhaul the systems completely then only you'll be able to improve the productivity um, towards the earlier level so pandemic had a big dip so is very natural because everything was closed down at that point of time. 
but you can see that IAP figure has gone up to the same level. So um, India's industry showed resilience and perhaps because of that in the post-COVID India is able to basically uh, basically register a um, significantly higher growth as compared to the rest of the world, uh, which is being discussed now all over the world that how actually India is able to come out of the, uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, challenges. Finally, uh, we'll talk about economic reforms and how actually we mo move forward. Um, so possibly in the coming days, with the new industrial policy will be coming. So India will be focusing more on artificial intelligence, 3D printing, Internet of Things, and other technologies. So these technologies will provide us uh, an opportunity to move one notch up. But there is a challenge, there's a downside, which is basically about employment losses. So uh, at this moment, this debate is very much live in the country or rather in the world that with the new technology, how much will be the job replacement will be there. So there is a possibility that uh, some kind of jobs will, will go away, but new kinds of jobs will come. So a country, how it is moving from the dying sectors or the skills to a, to a new sector, so how actually the country is reskilling its workers to get adapted to the new technology, which are very important for the country to sustain especially on the employment related issues. So, um, so, so what you require in the coming days to bring such things together and also overlapping of the policies like manufacturing, trade and innovation policy. We, let, let me summarize, in this particular chapter, uh, what we did, we basically provide the canvas for India's industrial development um, uh, with the focus on different phases of industrial policies and how new industrial policy actually helped India to grow and bringing the other issues like trade, FDI, skills and productivity together. Thank you very much. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.